Hey everyone, welcome back. So today I'm going to go through the Simply Charlotte Mason Early Modern and Epistles History, Geography, and Bible today. Uh, this was a requested video and I hope that it's helpful to you all. If you are interested in looking through it, uh, stay tuned. All right, everyone. Okay, so hopefully everyone can see this all right. This is the Simply Charlotte Mason Early Modern and Epistles. It is a year of history, geography, and Bible. We have been using this this year and have really enjoyed this. Um, we've been doing the history, but we've not done geography and Bible. We do those from something else. But if you do want this all as a combined study, this has got you covered. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what's in here to start off with. We've got the table of contents here. And this is how this is set up. So we've got two days of American history. Then on day three, they have geography and Bible. And then on day four and five, they have world history. Like I said, we don't use the geography and Bible, at least not this year. So, we substitute our geography into this day and Bible we typically do every day. So this is how that is set up. So you're learning two streams of history at the same time and not just American and not just world. They're, uh, you're learning the parallel histories at the same time. So this is the complete year's book list. Um, they have this on their website if you want to stop and like really take a good look at this. But this um, booklet here is set up to give you lesson plans for all the grades from 1 all the way up to 12. So first up here they have the family subjects. These are what everybody does and this is the materials that you'll need for this. Um, it tells you what it's for. So this is optional. Material World and Hungry Planet are for the geography, so we don't actually have those. And then AH is American History, and um, the rest of these are for um, the other. This is World History here. And then the Visits to North America Notebook is also geography, which we do not have at the moment. Um, this is the grades that I am currently using this for, grades one through three. I have a first and a third grader. So these are the only books that I have to show you. If you have other grades, you have um, books specifically for four through six, seven through nine, and over here is grades 10 through 12 and any other materials that you guys might need for that. They also tell you where to find the books. They also tell you where to find the books if you have problems finding them or you want to just get them from the library or um, I like to purchase all of my books. I like to have them in hand. Um, so I actually have all of them here, uh, physical copies. I got a lot of them off of thrift books and a few other places like Abe Books and uh, things like that. All right, so then they move on into term one. And this, this is split up into three terms. And it tells you um, what you're going to need for each of the grades and for the specific 12 week period. This is term one at a glance, which is super helpful as a lesson plan to get a great overview of all the grades and all of the things that you're going to need for each week. This is week one, American history, geography, Bible, and world history. Like I said, we just are doing the American history and world history. And this is my column of grade one through three that I'm looking at for each week. I really like how this is set up. All right, and then it moves on straight into the lesson plans. So lesson one is about Columbus, the great sailor. We need the stories of America volume one book, which I'll show you all the books here in a minute. And this is for grades seven, nine, and 10, 12, if you have those ages. 
Then it just talks about what we do as a family. And then it moves on into the specific grade um, areas that you would add on depending on the age of your children. So this is a American history. As you can see, there's an American flag here. So you have day one and day two as American history. Day three is the geography and Bible. If you are doing those. And then day four has a time, what is that, hourglass. <laughs> um, so day four is a world history. And day five, world history here. And then it moves on into the next week. So it just continues on like that. It's super simple to follow. It's laid out really nicely. It also has a list over here if you are keeping a book of centuries, which we started, but I've kind of dropped the ball on this. But um, if you are doing a book of centuries, it gives you specific things that you talk about to add into your book of centuries as well. And then at the end of the term, I'll show you this real quick here. It gives you a few days, like about a week, I think, of exam catch up. With Charlotte Mason, there's no written exams. It's mostly oral exams. And so they have exams or projects, any catch up you need to, you need to make. Um, we actually did, I did do a little bit of questioning for my kids, but we also did dioramas. My first grader did a diorama of a Indian village and my third grader did a diorama of Plymouth and just a little pilgrim se settlement there. So that was kind of our exam for first term is what we did. Um, on the website, they have other ideas for hands-on projects and things that you can do and um, just other, if, you're, if your kids are more hands-on and things like that than what this is actually showing you. So here are some questions. Um, tell what daily life was like for the pilgrims as they lived in America. That's for grades one through three. And then the world. Tell the story of a famous man about whom you've read this term. So those are just some ideas. And like I said, they tell you about all the different grades. You have everything here in this one book. So it's great. So then um, it moves on to term two and it is exactly the same setup. And it goes into all of the different lessons for that. So that's how that works. Okay. Um, so the way that Simply Charlotte Mason does it, they do six year history cycle. I know a lot of, oops, glare there. I know a lot of history cycles do a four year. They have split up ancient history into three years. I know that I've heard some people of doing two of these in a year. Um, I don't plan to do that, but I'm sure you can uh, look on their website for suggestions or there's also a podcast that Sonia Schaefer does on um, YouTube and I've watched a lot of her uh, suggestions and tips for using their curriculum. But um, anyway, and then also there is a really good, I'll see if I can link that video, but a really good video that she did about how to fit your children into this cycle so that even if you're starting in fifth grade or something and you want to make sure that your kids get um, American and world history, modern history for their high school cycle, there's a way to do that um, and jump in no matter where you want to. You don't have to start in Genesis. We never did, obviously. This is our first year. And so going off of how many more years I have with each kid and the cycle that we're going to continue with this, hopefully, um, to get my children to make sure that they get the high school credits for the history that they need um, when they need it. So I'll try to link that video below. I should be able to find it. All right, so along with this, like I said, there's the book list. And um, if you go onto their website, you'll be able to see that up close and really get a good idea of what the books are for this course depending on what grade and um, so here are the books that we are using this year this is the pilgrims of plymouth and we read this in sections i think 
We read it in three or four sections. The lessons are super short. Um, the readings are not long at all. It's able to keep your kids' interest. And um, like, let's see, the first, the first lesson we did in this, I believe, so this is the heading, The Pilgrims. And we read that and that. Oops, sorry. Did we read all of this one? There, to the men folk. And I mean, really, this reads fairly quickly. So it did not take very long. And then the next section was men folk that we read and then women folk. Um, and that was the lesson for the day. And then what we do, what Charlotte Mason does is they want you to narrate, to have the children narrate back to you what you read. We've done that most of the time, but sometimes my kids are like, why am I telling you what you just told me? Like, it's to help them uh, really solidify it in their brain, but sometimes they question, question the motive here. All right, the next ones we did were these three, um, Sarah Morton's Day, just goes through a uh, little pilgrim girl's daily life. Samuel Eaton's day is a little boy pilgrim. And what he had to do. And then this one is Tapanum's day, which is a little Wampanoag Indian boy. And how he lived. That was that. Then we went on to these two here. This was for the American uh, stream and this was for the world. So this is the Courage of Sarah Noble. She's about a little girl and her dad and they go up into the woods um, in early, early America and build a homestead. This is a lion to guard us. It's about three siblings that travel across the ocean from Europe to Jamestown to go meet up with their father. And uh, my children really enjoyed this book. We only read a chapter a day, so it was very short lesson. Here's a chapter right there, super quick. And um, they always wanted me to keep reading more, but I waited, <laughs> even though they wanted to. Um, these are the spines for the for this um, curriculum. There's Stories of America, Volume 1, and Stories of the Nations, Volume 1. Volume 2 of each of these are for the next year that we will be going into of the modern history instead of early modern. And I have little tabs here of where I am at. But this is just um, kind of a narrative telling of... Um, history in like a story form almost like the the writing is talking to you specifically in like a narrative form and so it's a little more interesting than just reading a textbook it talks about different stories and how things were so those are those this was okay so this book here is supposed to be on the schedule in here um, but it also says that some of the illustrations in this book can be upsetting or a little too much for sensitive children and I was looking through this and I kind of agreed I mean my children are super sensitive but I just kind of didn't really want some of these images in their head and so I looked and looked and looked for um, a different alternative. This is the story of Pilgrim's Progress. And I just, you know how like those early 80s cartoons, I mean, that's just kind of what, I can't think of the cartoons, but that's just the kind of like, I don't know, feel I was getting from some of these pictures. And they're just not, are you okay? And they're just not anything that I was even interested in looking at, to be honest. I mean, some people might find them really nice. And I was like, meh, okay, you know, they're great. But some of this stuff is a little bit scary. And I just didn't really feel comfortable having my kids um, 
look at this because I knew that they'd want to look at the pictures because we always read <laughs> picture books and stories and things. And so, you know, just just um, go with what you think your kids would be comfortable with or whatever. But uh, I wanted to find something that was very similar to this. And like I said, it says in the lesson plan to just be aware and use your own discretion. So what I found instead is this one. This is the cutest book. <laughs> and we are almost done. We are over halfway through this book. This is The Little Pilgrim's Progress. And it is illustrated with little woodland creatures. And it's just adorable. And I thought this was more up to par with how my children would prefer to listen to a story. <laughs> um... But if you don't know what Pilgrim's Progress is, this is an allegory of Christian, our Christian life and journey to get to heaven. And so the little rabbit in here is named Christian, and he goes on this journey to get to the celestial city. And he has lots of hang-ups and temptations and dangers as um, like we do as Christians going through life. And so uh, my children have loved this book. Um, it's been one of their favorite books so far. They're going to be sad when I get done reading it. Like I said, we are into part two here. So I still have a little ways to get through. I have a week. Shh. Just a minute. I have a week to get through this. And we read this actually as like a read aloud at night. So I was able to fit this in with the same time frame that this was to be read. And so this is our last week to get through it. I will easily get through this. It's a very, um, it's a pretty quick read when you get going and my kids just want me to keep going and going. I've got somebody here that might need a little bit of attention. All right, so if you see little hands, I've got, I've got a little buddy here. All right, so next there's a few more books here. We're just about to get into these. This is Tolliver's Secret. This is about a little girl that kind of becomes a patriot spy. Mm. And I don't know much about this yet because, like I said, we have not read this. But this is next on the list for the American history. The world history mm. part of that is Can't You Make Them Behave, mm. King George. Um, I think this one will actually be pretty interesting to read. So that's coming up next. And then the last two books here are The Dwellers, Benjamin Franklin. And I think this is the last read aloud that we do, but Out of the Darkness, a story of Louis Braille. So I think this is going to be actually fairly interesting. I have not, I don't know much about um, Louis Braille. So I think this is going to actually be pretty fascinating. So anyway, I almost forgot this part here. This is also part of this. It's optional. I mean, it, it calls for this. Um, whether this is necessary to the program is debatable, but it is fairly interesting. So what this is is the stuff they left behind. And these are pictures. I think there's one of these for each of the history units. These are just pictures Ooh, that's upside down, of different things in the past during the time frame. And it talks about each of these. That glare is awesome. Um, it talks about each of these throughout the course um, as you go along. Not every lesson does this, but so these are fairly interesting to look at. And a few questions for the kids to get them thinking. Um, this is the pamphlet here that talks about each of the items. And so that is also included in the uh, course itself. So that is that. And I hope that this was helpful to those who were looking um, to get more information on this and how this all worked for us. And we really enjoyed this so far. And I plan to move on into this next year. Oops. Um, so we will see how that goes. And I will have a 
fourth grader next year, so I will need to up some of the books. I will have to get two sets of books and um, work in work in how to fit that extra grade grouping in there as well. So um, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and I will make more homeschool videos coming soon. And I hope that you have a good day and thanks for watching. Bye.